I'm Aiden Brook with Seed World, and we are here with Sarah Wilbanks in Minneapolis at the ASCA meeting. And thank you very much for having me. It has been fantastic. It has been awesome to shake so many hands, meet so many faces, and put faces to names as well with um, the amount of conversations that I've had with Zoom calls and actual phone calls to actually come and have shake hands. So thank you very much for having me. Yeah, we're so excited that you came and made the time to come visit with us. And yeah. It's a nice little drive out too. I'm used to the drive across Canada from Winnipeg to Calgary, and that is flat. <laughs> flat all fields the whole way so seeing some lakes and trees along the way down it was totally awesome that's right and we had such a nice weather too i'm not sure who put that order in but it's been really incredible someone did i think they talked about the sun dance or rain dance in there someone did that and it was fantastic <laughs> awesome um so we'll jump right into it and when i think of seed certification aosk is the first organization that jumps to mind Tell me, why do you think having an association like AOSCA is so important to maintain sort of seed certification, not only in the U.S., but as you said, globally, moving forward? Yeah, so I think the most, um, or one of the most important parts is that we have uh, member agencies, of course, in, in, in most U.S. states and in the seven countries, and all of those people bring their expertise to the table here, right? So we have different crops all over the country. Other, uh, our other countries have a different um, crop system, and there's a lot of regulatory issues that come up um, internationally and, and, and interstate. And with that, we have the experts at the table. And so that really allows us to make sure we're doing the work that we need to help facilitate the movement of seed between our states and that shipment of seed overseas. And so I think um, just having that presence and having the structure that we do uh, really helps with that. Uh, and the other side is that we are in the Federal Seed Act, which is the regulation guidelines for all seed in the U.S., we are mandated by the Federal Seed Act to uphold the sections in the Federal Seed Act pertaining to certified seed. So with that, you know, we have an obligation to make sure we're doing um, that aspect of, of that work within our agencies. And so um, our structure works really well. Um, we're here at the annual meeting and we've worked for the last year to do some um, modernization of our standards and our systems. And so when, when something in the industry happens in one crop rotation cycle, Cycle, we're able to you know research that and then address it within our meeting cycle before the next crop rotation cycle and so we're we're able to, to meet industry standards and industry you know what the industry is looking for pretty quickly and I think that makes us really stand out in our in our seed world seed world yeah no I think that the help facilitate was really well said and I think facilitate is sounds like the right word to be used when it is talking about the different organizations that you are working with to make that happen and to meet these high standards because why do you certify seed to meet those high standards that you you have actually going on in the world um, and globally which i think is also a super impressive part of aosca is that it isn't just focusing on the us mm -hmm. it is focusing globally which is kudos to Oscar for that because it is not the easiest thing to be looking globally and to deal with the bigger problems sure. around the world. Sure, right. So I think that's fantastic. As seed companies, maintaining seed quality is probably a priority number one for most companies. What can seed companies do to further help AOSCA and its mission to have certified high quality seed for our customers? Sure. Um, I think the the biggest thing that seed companies can do that maybe sell or, or have certified varieties is, is help with that promotion. I think there um, at times is a lack of education within um, the industry. And I, I think we know that in anything to do with agriculture, right? We're always having to battle and and try to explain what is it we do and, and how and why and, and responsible agriculture and things like that. Um, and with our seed companies, it's saying, hey, this is, this is certified seed and this is what that means for you and I think that's really the selling point and what our seed dealers can can do for us to help support us and help support our agencies is just help with the education piece help with the education awesome I know another piece that comes from certification and you recently spoke on this in episode of seed speaks with Ashley Robinson is this trending aspect of traceability how does seed certification play into trace traceability 
Yeah, that's a great question. And I think something that we really do need to bring more awareness to because traceability is something that consumers are requesting now more and more so as the years go on. Uh, with certified seed, the traceability starts with um, the breeder. So all this, the seed that goes through our programs was established by a plant breeder who elected to put the seed in the program. And so that ties into the Federal Seed Act obligations and some Title V um, Federal Seed Act requirements. And with that, it says, hey, we know where the seed comes from and we know the characteristics of this seed. And so when that seed is planted, um, we look at that seed in the field for for those characteristics. We make sure there's no off types and, and we have allowances for all the, the standards and characteristics we look at. So that seed will actually be harvested and a, a population of, of the registered seed will now go to certified seed. So we have a system of multiple years of multiplication and, and um, now it does differ for every crop just a little bit, but that allows us to know exactly where that seed is at all time, who's been in the field, what we saw, the, the land history, um, any issues we see, and that's what's really valuable about our program is that we have experts in those fields walking them. Um, for instance, if um, we have a field that does have some off types within it, which happens, it's, it's not a perfect picture in when you're planting crops, but we have people out there in what we call roguing, and I talked to Ashley a little bit about this, but people are out there hand pulling plants out of the field to make sure when a combine comes in to, to do a harvest that that seed is harvested clean and then when it's going through a seed cleaner again it's even more so clean and, and there's additional processes so from the time it leaves the breeder through the growing process to the bag with the tag attached to it to the end consumer and grower we know where it's been who's looked at it and and how it's even moved through, through the transportation chain how important is the transparency side of traceability I think this is more me question. And I know that transparency is one of the goals of traceability, right. but is when you were saying that, I mean, with our food and everything like that, it, uh, consumers are wanting to know the full story, right? right? The full story of what was put on their seed, how their seed was treated, sure. all those different aspects. Is the main goal of traceability to have that transparency to the consumer? or one of the main goals, I guess? I think so. I really do think so. I think the consumers are driving all of these markets, right? And I think the more that they know, um, the the better off we are going to be in the end, right? Because in the ag industry, those who are knowledgeable and do have the facts, the proper scientifically supported facts, are probably the minority in the case of agriculture. So we're, we're out trying to advocate for what we do and how we do it and how sometimes things have to be done that may have a perception attached to them that is not, um, you know, it's, it's, it's bad or um, there's a number of other words that people use for some, some agricultural practices, right? But um, the, the more that we can teach people and, and the more that we can show people how responsible we are in agriculture and with our crop systems, our fertilizing systems, I mean, everything, you know, water that I think that's going to help build on uh, creating the appropriate message that consumers need to hear. I like that. No, I think that's fantastic. And I think the last one I have for you is if there's one thing you want folks to walk away from the annual conference with, what would you want them to know? Yeah, I think um, I would want people to understand the the level of knowledge that we have um, at this meeting and what goes into making the changes that we make that then affect the system down to the, the end consumer. Um, you know, we have stakeholders from USDA, from, we work with PVP, we work with breeders, we work, I mean, from all aspects of the industry and, and our system really allows us to make decisions, but also make decisions that are only positive to the the other players within our industry as well. And so I think it's really important just to know that the, the level that uh, has always been associated associated with AOSCA and certified seed is still a very high level of, of knowledge and respect in the industry. And, and that's something that we make sure that we keep as a high priority for ourselves in um, you know, keeping AOSCA going for the next hundred years, so. 
I think that's fantastic. And something that I have recognized being here as well is that the ability to have the personal and professional all working cohesively right. where there's still there's still room for both those conversations to happen right. where we're on the way to a golf course and talking about seed certification and different ways to improve different agencies so i just think that, that it's fantastic that there there can be that because i think we kind of talked about it a little bit that there there are some times where you can't have both um, because of the previous way it was or where it's going, but I think that AOSC has done a really good job of allowing for that personal and professional side to go. Sure. Like hearing the different speeches of how personal, like the stories that they are able to tell and that they're not always like just from last year, they're from a few years ago from when they started and they're giving out awards for five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 55, 55 exactly. Yeah. So I think that that's fantastic. And it just says so much about organizations and the type of work that they're doing, if they're giving out awards for those sure. continuous increments of five years, right. I just think that it's... Yeah, people are really dedicated in our industry, um, for sure. And I think it really, you know, anything in business, I think really boils down to those relationships that you build, you know, working with people, being able to come to common, common ground on really difficult decisions. And that's what we're faced with in the industry that we work in. It's not, it's not always easy, um, but having people who are willing to, you know, give and take and, um, and really create that dialogue is I think one thing that plays into us being so efficient in getting our system um, and our processes the way that they, they currently are. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time, Sarah. Appreciate it. We appreciate you coming.